Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. My dad walk on. Man, hey man, look out, man. How you doing though? You good? I am iry. Oh, okay. All right, all right. I'm learning every day, and I've been over there, so I, I pick up real quick, you know. But, um, man, hey, we got a special guest here today, man. Mm -hmm. This guy don't need no introduction, man. You guys, if you ever, man, the the, the guy played a guitar so well. I've been, I, I went down that rabbit hole trying to understand, like, who is this guy, man? Stone Mecca is in the building, man. <laughs> hey, man, I know who he is now. Uh, how you doing? I'm good, brother. How are you? Man, I'm doing great, man. So, so. Stone Mecca, man, I, I, that's a that's a strong name. It is a very I like the name. <laughs> that's a strong name. How old were you when you discovered that name? Ah, oh, was I? See, you coming out with these questions? I have to think about. <laughs> right? You taking me down? No, I'm saying, let's see. Um, I was probably around twenty seven. Twenty seven? No, 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 earlier about twenty five. Actually, okay, twenty five. And yeah. what was going on in your life at that time that inspired that name? I've always been real, real strong in, in like the belief of the power of music and um, making sure that it, it uh, and, and you know, giving it to the people properly as far as like, you know, inspiring them and different. And um, so I wanted a name that represented something that was strong like that, you know, mm -hmm. and that people can depend on. So Stone for me was just something solid, right? you know. Uh, and you were always a solid person. <laughs> <laughs> were you? Uh, well, you know, yeah, we're, that's another discussion, you know. So, Stone. I'm always better in myself, though. You know? Okay. And in Mecca? <laughs> Mecca has always been something to me like, you know, everybody has their own private Mecca, whatever that is. The place you go for solitude, for your own building of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, time for, with yourself. So, I wanted something that was like a solid home in music for people. So I dedicated to saying that anything I do musically, I'll make sure I put that much into it to make it where it was that, you know. So the name, what name did you have before Stone Mecca? I mean, there were so many names given, you know. Oh, I mean, so you, you know. you've changed multiple times. Well, no, I mean, it was kind of like, you know, I was discovering what. Path you wanted to be on? Not path, really. It was really like the the name. I mean, I came up with a couple different names of myself, but then mm -hmm. people gave me names from the stuff I did. Mm -hmm. And then someone was talking to me, and that's how Stonemaker came about. It was kind of like somebody was telling me about the kind of music I do mm -hmm. and how it um, it's consistent in that way. So I, that's when I decided to do something. Like, what was the name that would be strong like that that means that that I can stick with? You know? oh, okay. So but let's go back like further that. back, because I love to go into background. All right. <laughs> I know you were born in L.A., yep. Inglewood. Inglewood. Okay. Um, what was it like um, living in Inglewood? And at a young age, did you always want to be in music? You know, yeah. I've always loved music, you know. Um, it was really, really cool, because where I grew up, it was like everyone over there were geniuses to me. <laughs> you oh, know, really? they were so special. You don't know it when you're young. You know, you're just doing whatever you do. But we did so much, created so much. It wasn't just hear? music. It was dancing. It was it was building things and making really? things. And I mean, DJ Pooh. Yeah. Because when you hear about Inglewood, the first California thing you think about is the, the gangs and violence and I mean, all of that sort of stuff. I mean, we had all of that. But it wasn't. If you lived there, you'll get to know the, the reality of that. Okay. You know, the gangsters respected you if you was on your own thing. If you was doing your own hustle, if you had your own way about yourself, they didn't, you know, they respected you, you know. And, and, and um, but like I said, the people that grew up there, it's, it, it's, put it like this, we always felt like we could survive there, we could survive anywhere just because sure. of, of the things we learned in mm -hmm. the streets, you know. Um, like I was saying, DJ Pooh grew up around the corner from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, DJ Pooh. Dub grew up around the other block over here. You know, Threat was my best friend growing up when we were little. Wow. You know, Cube lived, you know, it was like mm -hmm. all these people came out of there, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody were kind of innovators in that sense, you know. So 
I was always along that. I played drums when I started drums when I was like nine years old. Wow. My father had a band. He used to play sax. They used to practice See. at the house. You know, I'm so going to So it's in bed. the blood. It's yeah, I mean, you know, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a love for music in a sense that was always there. You know. Yeah, I I, I was uh, so Inglewood, California, Dallas, Texas, or Fort Worth, Texas, or where? What the the transformation? What 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 brought that about to come to Texas? I was interested in that. You know, I've been before I decided to come here. I'd already been a lot of different places. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and I lived in Atlanta for a yeah, while. Man, in the I, love Atlanta. I, live, I love Atlanta too. <laughs> you know, but um, I had to go back to LA to do some things. Um, and then I met my wife. Okay. She had been there for 15 years. In met her LA or in, um, in LA. Atlanta? In LA. Okay. Um, I met her, um, and she's from here okay. originally. Mm. So when we had our kid, we have a son together. Um, it was like, you know, thinking about him growing up, where I wanted him to grow up, the kind of influence, the family I wanted him to be around, and things like that, you know. Um, I decided to come on out here, you know, because he would be closer to his grandparents. The schooling would be a lot better, better just mm -hmm. in the sense that when I grew up, you know, you did get sweated. You know what I mean? Right. You get yeah. on the bus, they say, what set you from? And this and that, they ready to, you know, we fought a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that influence is still there. I, I saw, mm -hmm. I could see it every day when and I And it's just, changed, it changed somewhat because who we were interviewing, we were interviewing some, I think it was Payback. And, oh, yeah, Clint. Yes, Clint. <laughs> and he said he was somewhere, and a young um, person pulled up to him and called and said, like, milkshake, was it milkshake or something like that? And he was like, what's your milkshake? And he's like, what? He's talking about the youngsters, the way they're doing it now. So they the changed way it. Yeah, right. yeah, that's a whole it's And he was like, thing. what you talking about? But it's, it's just a different way of how they do things, and you have to, like, represent your clique that you're from. You have to say it when they approach you a certain way. I think the difference is now is they're like, you know, they're into it because it's a cool thing to do, not a, ne a necessity. Mm -hmm. You know, back gangs back then, some of them did it because they just wanted to be down, but a lot of it was a necessity because you're living a certain way mm -hmm. and you need things that you're not getting, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so they go after it in the streets, mm -hmm. you know, but now it's kind of like, you know, just because it's cool, they think it makes them cool, you know, whatever, whatever. So how but, is the music here compared to when you were in L.A. or Atlanta? Because I totally understand moving here because of family. Mm -hmm. But you're also a musician. So how is that transition career-wise being here compared to any of the other places you've been? Well, I had already established myself in L.A. Mm -hmm. with the people and all that. So I was already still working, you know what I mean? And this is only two and a half hour flight. So... I always knew when I needed to do something, I can go back there and do it, mm. or we can do it over the internet or whatever. So I continued to work. I didn't leave anything behind with that. Um, but as far as the musicians and the music, Dallas is killing. I really? mean, shh, I came out here and met some of the rawest people I've ever met wow. playing music. You wow. know, Atlanta has some raw folks too. Mm. That was yeah. such a long time ago though. But um, LA, it has raw folks, but it's, it's, they get away with not having to do as much. Not digging in is hard mm -hmm. because it can be more of a hype thing with them rather than an actual music thing. Oh, okay. Them. I took some people from here to L.A. to work on some stuff, and we went to a spot one night to hear some live music. It was supposed to be somebody that's raw and all this, you know. They got in there and was shaking their head <coughs> and walked out like, what the, you know. Mm. Wow. And it's really because it's they're in competition for what's happening now. Mm -hmm. Like it was on the radio and this and that. So they're playing that kind of stuff. And a lot of that's not a lot of musicianship. Mm -hmm. But out here, they can really give a damn about all of that. Mm -hmm. you know? So they mm -hmm. dig in on some whatever they feel right, and right, loving right. how music, you know. What, yeah. you know. The true meaning of music, really, the way how it's supposed to be. Yeah, so yeah. I felt more at home here just in that sense. That's sure. good. Do you have any siblings that do music as well? Um... Might as well say Kenyatta. He's, he's like your name. Saying, yeah, 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 yeah. He got one. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. that's true. That's like Couple my brother actually. from another mother. Yeah. You know, he, <laughs> me and him grew up doing music together. But, <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, no, immediate family. No. Not really. No. I mean, people have talent, but okay. they didn't follow that. 
Oh, okay. You know, that no, 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 you said your was, father was, you know, in the music industry, so that's the reason why I was He like, wasn't in the industry. Not he industry. Just like, he, he, loves me. he just played his saxophone. Right, that's right. right. That's what I meant. So um, I didn't or know piano or whatever was yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. He jumped on whatever just because he loved it. He still does. He's 70-something mm -hmm. years old now, and he'll pull out his sax, wow. set him on the bed, and play him, and play the keyboard, and he'll send me a video of him playing hey. something. Is he still in L.A.? Oh, yeah, he's still out there. The, oh, okay. So, um, do Growing up, um, when you first started in music, who was who was your biggest influence? Like influenced you in the music, you know, whether it be the guitar, or playing the drums. Um, I mean, I was influenced by music in general when I was little, because you know how black households were. We played all that great, yeah, music, the greatest mu music ever, soul music. Growing up, we had it in our bones, so all that stuff spoke to me anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when I became uh, a teenager, two things happened. I found a Sly, because I used to play on my father's album, but I found a Sly Stone, uh, uh, There's a Riot Going On album. Okay. And that one was so deep as far as the depth of funk and like soul that I always imagined if I did music, it would be this way. Mm -hmm. He was the closest to what I saw. You know, and I was like, wow, thank you for talking to me, Africa, that the other version of thank you for letting me be myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard that, but if you haven't, that's what you see you. that that was one of the joints and you hear that, you get it. But I saw that um, I was in other kinds of music. You know, I love the guitar, just the way it rock and roll. Some I got that studio when I listened to your music. I was like, he liked that rock and roll. Oh, too. yeah. No, no, no. I, I definitely love some that I like. I like things that are just raw. Yeah, you know, and people that dug into rock and roll, and and like classic rock, you know, all that stuff came from you know. I mean, you gotta think Jimi Hendrix, the blues, and all that. Yeah. If you look and listen to the blues, you hear a lot of where the rock man, what the you biggest rock about? songs came from. Mm -hmm. They were wailing on the guitar, and it was you know. So it was kind of like when I think about rock and roll, I think about that rock and roll. When you when you first started, well, being in the music as long as you had, did you ever get to hear BB King play blues or any of that? Man. <laughs> Man, that's like the greatest man. He's such a sweet guy. Yeah. Mm. I finally got to meet him, actually. I always loved this that's stuff. That's good. And I met a guy that was his role manager. Okay. And um, and uh, he was coming to L.A. at B.B. King's. And he said, man, I'll get you some tickets, you know. And this is later on in his life, too, mm -hmm. you know. And I invited him. I mean, I'm not invited. I'm sorry. I invited um me and my wife went. I invited uh, RZA. RZA went RZA, with okay. his wife. Yeah. And we all four went and watched B.B. King. And, and it was just, it was amazing, man. And then afterwards. You got to talk to him. Yeah, the guy was like, you know, I got you set up. You guys come back to the back. And he had his own trailer. So he called us back in there. And we go in the trailer. He got a guitar that he assigned to Lionel Richie sitting on the thing right there on the couch. Wow. You know, I'm looking at that first. I ain't even got to be the king yet. <laughs> I'm like, man. So we walk in, and he's sitting back there, and he wiping his face and stuff, you know, because he just got off the stage. And we sat down and talked to him for about an hour and a half. Wow. Just digging in. He was just the sweetest. Felt like you, you, you know, you known him all your life. Mm. Wow. And me and Rizzo was looking at each other just... Amazed. Like, wow. This one of them times, man. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you better know it, man. One of them times. So, uh, you but I wanted it, to Rizzo, know. though, how did he, you, you want to ask about Rizzo? No, I, I wanted to um, know one thing, because starting out, cause I know we're going back and forth a lot, but starting out in your journey with the music industry, did you ever know that you would have been such a master of all these different genres of music? Because you don't just stick to one genre of music. Mm -hmm. Did you know that that's who you were? Was were you striving to do that or it just happened? As long as I had the root of what I am always present, which is that soul, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I'm, I'm a, a, a soulful, funky dude, period. It shows in your style. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's, 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 as long as I had that root, then whatever else I did around it to express it, mm -hmm. I allowed it to be. You know, okay. I, I just didn't, I didn't want to be in a box. I didn't want to be put in a place because it's like an artist. An artist, you know, when you when you paint a picture, an artist paints a picture. He's recognized by the different, the difference in his pictures compared to others. That's mm -hmm, how people know mm -hmm, who he is. Mm -hmm. But the music industry is totally different than that. 
they put you in the box, even though you're an artist. You see what I'm saying? They want you to sound like this person, this person, or that person. You're, we're all individuals. I won't sound like that person if you let me express myself freely and truly. So but when you, but when you express yourself freely and truly, and then you have your fans like a certain sound that you give, and that's what they want to hear. Right. That sound. But you want to venture off into other sounds because that's who you are. You're not just this one sound. Right. How do you choose to do that when your fans are asking for this sound? Well, I think that, you know, that's a good question because the thing is, is if you have true fans that are digging into you as a person and your music, not just, I like that song, you know what I mean? They will go with you on your journey, you know? And you always, it's, like I said, there's still gonna be that thing always there. That soul and whatever, that root of you is always going to be in whatever. Wow. You know, take for instance Prince. Mm -hmm. You know, he done went in all kind of places with his music. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that remained was the root of who he is. So his fans stuck with him and went with him on that ride. I was going to ask you, did you get you know, to meet Prince? Yes, I did. And it's... Well, really? Give me that Prince like, story, man. man. I need to hear that. I had already seen him a couple times in places. Okay. You know what I mean? And, and like... We'd be in the same place I seen him in this and this and that, you know. And Sheila E is one of my friends. Oh man, shout out Sheila E, man, dope. Yeah, she, she's wonderful, She's man. very she, dope. She's a good person, good hearted person. And always okay, for people, people like me, who is that? Sheila E. Dun, 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 Glamorous dun, life. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I know the song, I know that song. <laughs> I'm giving it to her. I know, I know yeah, songs a lot of time, yeah, and I don't always know the names of who's singing. Oh no, that's, but that's I'll a just, lot of people. <laughs> You know, yeah, what that's mean? my but girl. She, there. I, I love um, I love what she Ross, did, man. One of the yeah, rawest like drummers, song. percussionists ever. Still you know? to this day. Yeah. And um, so, knowing her and knowing some of her family and all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, when Prince came and did the, um, uh, no, actually before that, actually, uh, it was her birthday party. She mm -hmm. was having a birthday party at the Congo Room in L.A. So I got invited. I went down, and it was a little private part and all of this. So we were all in there. And Prince showed up. So I'm hearing he's in here and he's over here sitting way up here. And I said, man, I got to meet him one day, man, just to tell him thank you. You know what I mean? Thank you. Because that was the other part of my story when I said two people when I was young. Right. Um, but I wanted to tell him thank you. And so I talked to Sheila. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, look, I just want to tell the dude thank you for I wouldn't be who I am musically if he hadn't done what he done and, you know. So if I can just get a chance one day just to say what's up and, you know. She was like, all right, hold on a second. <laughs> wow. She met that right then, huh? She went away, man. And then all of a sudden she came back over to said, come on, come on. So I walked over. He's standing there, got his cane. And all this, you uh -huh. know. Yeah, yeah, that's it. He, he getting his down. Style. Oh, man. And I walked up and said, man. First I shook his hand. And while I was holding it, I said, I said, man, I just want to thank you for your years of inspiration. When I said I wouldn't be who I am if I hadn't found you when I was young, you know. Um, you know, and we talked for a minute. He was just like one of the dudes. He was yeah, yeah, like, yeah, he yeah, yeah. The dudes. Did he have Real his bodyguards cool. around and stuff? Nah. No? Not on this okay. one. Just chilling. You know, because it was Sheila's thing. Right. So they was, you know, roped in and so he kind of mm -hmm. knew he'd be all right or whatever. Or if they were, you know, they were Secret Service type. Right. They wouldn't right. even yeah. have known it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I talked to him and this and that. You know, it was just that thing, just being able. And then I saw him again when he did the 21 day, 21, I think it's 21 day stay at the forum in LA when he stayed there for 21 mm -hmm, nights. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to go downstairs and the, and the after thing and Sheely and her whole family were playing on the stage. And the stage was only this high, you know what I mean? So you right there with him, mm -hmm. you know, Boris and his wife was right there and these different people. And uh, Prince came in, he just checked his stuff out. Then he goes sit in the back on this little couch thing with some little girl, you know, he chilling. Then he come walking straight through the middle, everybody. And every, it's like the sea party. Mm. Wow. He walked through the middle, got up on the stage right there. I walked, I watched him just walk right past me, got up on the stage, and just the dude that was on the Did keyboard just moved over. Wow. He got on the keyboard and just started playing with him. Jumped right in on the song, like, whatever they was playing. Loved wow. it. Yeah, I mean, you know. That's a dope story, man. Um, just wish I could have got to meet him, man. I'm jealous, but it's all good, you know. And one day, maybe I'll get my, I get to meet you. Oh, so man, that cool, makes man. me connected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do, people, do people tell you that some of your music um, sort of reminds them of Prince? Mm -mm. No? No, he didn't. Your tell voice. Me. No, not him. Oh. I'm talking, do any of your fans, do people tell you that? Um, 
Because hearing you talk and then hearing you sing is like two totally different people. <laughs> Vocally. Um, you know, uh, I mean, people know it, I think, because of how the the inspiration, I guess the influence of the different sounds of music I put in my music. Mm -hmm. You can only, you can not, you don't have too many people you can go to and say, oh, it's like that or it's mm -hmm. like that. So I've heard it before and then I've heard a bunch of other things. Yeah, because your you music, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It travels like once it it may be sounding this way. Then we go over here. It's a different way. It ain't. And I'm, I was listening at it. I'm listening at the different right. tones, man. I love it, though, because I, 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 I think it's just art when you look at it. You know what I mean? That's what it is. It's it, a painting, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and I love it. Like I said, you you. Um, yeah, even when I seen you performing on stage, you and uh, RZA, uh, that, that's what I was bringing up a while ago, RZA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how was that? How did you meet RZA and how did that relationship start? RZA came to a show of mine in uh, 2004, I think. And um, it was when I was doing more of the group thing and I had some other people singing and other stuff like that. And it was more of a soul R&B thing. I was doing that stuff a long time ago um, and he met me after the show, said what was happening and all this. And he said that um, his his label was going to be up the next year. And he wanted to talk to me and this and this and that. So that's kind of where it all began. Wow. You know. And um, then we just became, we started working together. The label thing never really got up. <laughs> never mm. got to that place. Mm -hmm. But we started working together. And um, he started including me on... Uh, the tour stuff, I became his role manager and for the bands and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and uh, we just became, you know, real tight. Mm -hmm. and, and we started working on movie stuff together and, you know, a bunch of different That's things. That's cool. Yeah. So we, when you mentioned the group, because I looked you up and I saw an interview, because you, you haven't done many interviews that I could find. And one of the interviews I saw um, 12 years ago, because I know your name is Stone Mecca, but in the interview when you were introducing the group that was with you, you said, we are Stone Mecca. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, is it a group or is it an individual? That's what I thought too. I, I, I've seen the same thing. You know, so I'm trying to figure out when did it change? Well, it was originally supposed, to, I, it was going to be my thing. Mm -hmm. And then when I first started putting the group together, it was so strong. I was like, well, let's make it a group thing and call the name stone maker for the group mm -hmm. that's what you got know. me because i knew it was something but that was because i was really trying to make a movement okay. out of it and even though the people were changing the group and all this stuff and and i was still trying to make a movement out of it and keep it right. keep the brand okay mm -hmm. but then after the years of dealing with that with different people and people moving and leaving and doing these different mm -hmm. things you know um i decided to just say this back go back to it being just me and that's who i am you know i know being an entrepreneur i know how hard it is to find people who i've met one person on this platform that has had his group of people with him for a long time and i told him i say you are blessed you know how hard it is to find a group of people who will support you and interact with your brand right and be there by your side for years and not have to interchange. It's very, very hard to have that. Oh, it's a rare, especially nowadays. It's a rare it's very, thing. You know, back in the day, it. it was the thing to have a band and all this. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Earth Wind and Fire. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And that was my dream to make it that big because mm -hmm. of them. You know, yeah. Earth Wind and Fire and those kind of people. Um, and people would come on, and they'll and usually, I was still the one that did all the music, the production, and everything. And then. Um, and then work with a couple singers and we'll put the stuff together like that. And then the band and the group that comes together usually came after that, mm -hmm. you know, and we went out and performed that stuff. So it was never going to be where it messed up the sound or anything like that if I switched people because yeah. they weren't in charge of that part, right. you know. But um, when they would get to a place where we'll go out and things would start happening for us, you know, and they'll start doing things they had never done. They'll go on the road, you know, RZA had us doing some things overseas and all this kind of stuff, you know. Sometimes people can be their worst enemy, exactly. especially if they're in the front. You know, I took the back a lot of times. Mm -hmm. You know, I played the guitar, the bass or something while they were, and they got to be in the front mm -hmm. singing and they started believing the, the audience is going crazy and all this. And they start, you know, that's me, you know. <laughs> 
And then they'll go out and try their own solo thing or whatever, you know, and, and they wouldn't get the same attention. Mm-hmm. And then they'll call me back, you know, like, let's back. do it. <laughs> They get like Eddie you, Kane. Huh? You don't give a second <laughs> chance. It's okay. Come on. Well, no, you know, it's it's more so they stop the momentum mm. of everything that we're building when that, when for that, selfish when, gain when they when things like that happen. You know what I mean? I don't hate them all for it because the people right. got to go through their own thing, and we're still friends. All the people yeah. that I'm speaking about, but you know, uh, uh, it's 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 uh, I've already moved on to the next thing trying to keep the momentum going and things mm-hmm, like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, because <laughs> I'm so much yeah, into it, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. The thing, I, I definitely, um, like I said, so RZA, Wu-Tang, did you rock out with all of them at points? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and <clears throat> how how was it dealing with the whole group? It was it was cool, man. All of them are really good dudes, man. They're, they're really, really wonderful people, you know. Um, you knew old Dirty Bastard? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, how, was, how was he? I'm just... Cool. Yeah, I'm I right. mean, just real cool, you know what I mean? Um, when they did the um, Rock the Bells, mm-hmm. when they did they were there, the headlining with um, uh, Rage Against the Machine. Okay. Um, we went out with them with that. So we played as the band for them. So I put the band together, you know, and they... And um, so I was with them through that whole thing. We were on the buses, we did the whole thing. And I had met them before that, just dealing with Rizzo. Yeah. But... Um, they're all just like, like home, you know, they welcoming, they come in, man, what you need, mm-hmm. this and this and that, you know. So they've always been real good. When, when you think about uh, Old Dirty Bastard, you, you think about that energy, you know what I mean? But I know a person not like that at all nah, times. Nah, 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 not but, at all. But when he hit that stage, the oh, character nah, comes he was, he was, to play. You see <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? You know who he was. You remember, you know those people you meet, you might have them in your family or something like that, that you think, Envy in a way because they are exactly who they are at all times. Yeah. And they're going to be that. Okay. You know that's what I mean? Was. It's like my auntie. I think about my auntie Carol. She's that way. We look at her like she going, that's auntie Carol. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, ODB yeah, I was like that. He going to be that You way. see what you get. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and you know, that teaches us because a lot of times we hide behind things. We're not exactly who we are. We're scared to show the public our real faces and things like that. Correct. Mm-hmm. Not, not, he ain't not never, old dirty he ain't never been that dude. His name and everything fit, you know. <laughs> name no, and seriously. No, but I when you're it, around him away from that, he just chill. Yeah. What's up, man? You know, he cool. Mm-hmm. We sit there watching some kung fu stuff together. When he when he got out and he w- was interviewed by VH1, they were following him around. I was out there at the time okay. at 36 Chambers in uh, New York. Okay. And he came through and I'm, you know, we hanging out and all this stuff and and um so I'm saying, and then a little while after that, when I got back home, Rizzo was still out there. That's when he passed away. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? And that was a hard thing. You know, they're it? cousins. Yeah. So first Rizzo, of all. so you, how, you, you, it had to affect you as well. You knew him. So I mean, it, it definitely affected me because, like I said, I got to know these dudes, you know, and, and, and they're people, man. Correct. You know what I mean? You get to know the real part of them beyond all the other stuff. So, Anybody that goes through any kind of suffering, anything like that, you know, close to you or not, you know. And then I'm feeling for Rizzo because I know how close he was as well. And yeah. I knew his son, ODB's wow. son, the one that's out there that looks just like him. Yeah. Yeah, young, young, um, young dirty bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Bar yeah. sign is his real name. But he's, um, I used to do music with him up at the studio and stuff. Wow. And me and him, you know, got real tight, you know, and... Um, and uh, he looks just like him too. Does he mm. just just like him? And now he 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 does his thing just like him. But he's a very mature, you know, dude. Definitely, you know. Yeah. So. Out of all of the different um, celebrities you've had dealings with, is there anyone that come to your mind that gave you a life life lesson, something that stuck with you forever? That yes. You, who is it, and what did they give you? Um, Maurice White. Earth, wind, and fire. Okay. Yes, that's like my Jupiter brother. We're both Sagittarius, mm. and I got to go on the road with them when I was very young. And before that, I had seen parts of the industry growing up. People had wanted me to get this group, singing group, doing this, whatever, you know. But those people that would come with come to me for that, they were in the part of the business that was a little dirty. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, using cocaine to pay for mm. studio time. I was a young kid, <laughs> mm-hmm. so this is so my introduction. 
you know, the dudes from Rolls Royce coming in, playing on stuff, and but they coming off the streets because they because they've been out there strung out and shit. You know, it's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I got to see a lot of stuff when I was young <laughs> growing up out there. You know, Man. and to see the good side of the industry, I was introduced to that by them. Okay, okay. because they are really who they are on those albums. That mm-hmm. spiritual, mystical. You know, we couldn't eat wrong. Wow. You know, I mean, it was just, but they were very deep spiritual. And every night to hear that beautiful music they made in person like that was just filling me up. You wow. know, still five of the original members were there. They still had the stage show where they had the big, you know, disappear at the end. They go right, up in there and disappear right, and all right. of this, you wow. know. So to see all that at a, at a young age, you know, and then sit with Maurice, mm-hmm. like in the back of the bus and stuff, and he telling me stuff about the things they seen and studied and you know it was just man you know it was it was very uh uh i guess you can say it made me say okay you know this is what i'm gonna do yeah, yeah. and this is how i'm gonna do and it I'm a, and it's okay man. for me to do it my way mm-hmm. man. you know because they were very unique in their talent everything man. and he wanted to go out and be like a circus that came to town right and he, and he did yeah, definitely. He did exactly what he said he wanted to do because it was the timing too. At that mm-hmm. time, it was wide open for something like that, and he and he did it. How yeah. hard is it for an artist to stay out of the bad side of the industry? Because even like growing up where you grew up, Inglewood, and not being a part of the gangs, not being a part of, and then go, coming into the music industry and not you know taking cocaine, doing all of that other stuff. How could an artist young artist coming up stay away from all of that you got to have your own mind man you can't let nobody you can't be influenced you can't be a follower because they will get you if you look at all of our raw talent the black uh entertainers that have been around if you look at their stories you know most of them come down to they got messed off by some kind of drugs Mm -hmm. or money something Mm-hmm. It's the same thing for each one of them. We lost a lot of good talent because of that. Right. You know what I mean? And good people. So you got to look at Kendrick Lamar. He said, oh, I ain't going to do what these dudes are doing. I'm going to let, let everybody know that. I don't get high. You know what I'm saying? Because too many times you've seen that. You've seen the Whitney Houston who passed away from it, her daughter. I yeah, mean, I mean it's, it's, it's very tragic. It's all and you in see there. Over the years. And I'm like, how can we put an end to that? Well, it's a money machine, you know. Once people realize they can make money from stuff, they'll do whatever it takes to make the money. So the people behind the scenes will influence you to keep going. Mm-hmm. That's what they used to do with the rock bands and the, and the, and the other bands back in the day, Ohio players and all that, mm-hmm. to keep them on the road and keep them going to get this money and all this kind of stuff. That, that they gave them the, the, the I think it stuff, still happens you know? today. Oh, it does. I, I, I've talked to a it lot does. of guys in the hip-hop industry mm-hmm. and... Um, I can look in their eyes because I, I was a hustler back in the days. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yeah. I he, can see that right now. Look at <laughs> Game recognized yeah, yeah, game. I was, I was I like, yeah. Yeah, so you know, you're like, I'm looking at him like, yeah. Um, yeah, he's still, he's still up for two days right now. You know? mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they're, they're stay up. That's why you <laughs> wonder money, why them crackheads you know, crack be running around like they can't catch nothing. Riding bikes and... <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. yeah. So do you... Um, when you... Um, when you've seen the era of music changing, right? Because I say changing because a lot of times it came into the beat machines and all the different j- things that happened that changed the music uh, over, you know, from the live band era because it was a strong live band era when you were younger. But then it hit a phase where the beat machines and all that stuff became a very impactful time. Uh, how did you adjust to that? Um, I've always liked that music anyway in a sense you know from back in the day from when we were little growing up in Inglewood Egyptian Lover and them oh, came around man, I remember mm-hmm. that that's my you that's see what I'm talking it. about so that electronic drum beat and all that stuff I already like okay so <laughs> but for me I did like the live stuff but I did want sometimes the live stuff to hit a little harder okay or to have that kind of control so I would use it sometimes myself but okay. it's a way to do it without it uh uh sounding so you know uh digital i guess you can say okay you know prince he used um the lin drum a lot on those songs and people don't know that that mm-hmm. was a drum machine you know yeah um uh i was just driving over here and um between the sheets came on i was the brother that's a drum machine 
but you yeah, but yeah. it's it's the way you do it so it can be tasteful it can be tasteful it can okay. be done properly yeah you know and it even might even sound better than the drummer if you do it right you know okay but that, that that's another qu- that brings me up to it. when you went there so when, when, when i think about uh t-pain and uh roger zap mm-hmm. uh so when you heard t-pain for the first time did you think about roger zap because you got an ear for music so i, I know you listening no yeah yeah I, <laughs> I knew what he was doing but it was such a difference from roger zap that it was like <laughs> it became overwhelming for me because okay. it made it where now this is the industry standard and people that don't even have like roger had talent okay roger had to play the keyboard notes to match what the the melodies he was trying to do in his vocals. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So that took talent in itself. You know, and he played the shit out of the guitar and all these other things. Well, you know, know T-Pain just being, you know, uh, uh, being the devil advocate or something or being mm-hmm. on this other side, T-Pain had a good voice, but it got over saturated with the, I guess, the, 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 the auto tune. You but he could sing, the wrong, though. You asking the wrong person. <laughs> but he could sing. I'm just saying, like, they had him on a contest. I heard him like, dang, I never thought, I never knew he could sing because I couldn't hear I mean, he found his niche and he made his way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and that's that's not his fault that the industry does what they do. Like I said, they if you get a sound, everybody that follows has to have that sound because it's a capitalistic game. They know they can make money off this. They mm-hmm. know this is going to happen, so let's keep it up. So they make everybody else do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, no, I, you're asking the wrong person. No, I get back, it. I, I, get I, it. I, I'm, I don't, it's not something that I'm, that you're I listen even to. Into. Or like, you know, yeah, because you're too, you too organic, to be honest with you, with the instruments. And I, I, I love the, 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 I love the, the like I, I think about Rick James and Cold Blooded, the way that sound when it come in. You can't beat that, man. No, no. And as those, you got to think about the innovation back then. That's what a lot of people don't think about. These dudes was making this from scratch. Yeah. It hadn't been done before. So just that in itself, the innovation and being the first to do this, the thought pattern behind it, you know, our people are really good at that. But when we can't use it or not allowed or allowed to show it, then you see kind of see what's happening now, you know. You can hear one person and it'll sound just like the other person. You don't mm-hmm. know who's who. They all sound the same. When right. we were young growing up, when you heard Al Green, you knew that was Al Green. Definitely. Mm-hmm. When you heard Rick James, you knew that was Rick you James. You knew it. They didn't sound like each other because that was their own individual artistic expression. Yeah. That's the difference, you know, and it wasn't a capitalistic industry as much. They that wanted money, but the people mm-hmm. that were running it could have been musicians themselves and singers themselves and DJs. Sly used to be a DJ before he was a an artist mm-hmm. you see so they they respected music you know and that's why those songs are still classic songs you can play it today for the first time for a little kid and their soul will be moved by mm-hmm. it yeah mm-hmm. yeah they'll be yeah. taken because that's what they made music to do back then okay i got a question so i know you were inspired by prince so since you were inspired by him and he plays 27 instruments <laughs> I want to know how many, how many, many play, instruments you? do you play? <laughs> Not 27. <laughs> Man. Nah, nah, that dude right there. Is, I listen to him sometimes and just get mad. Like, man, <laughs> really? You doing that too? Nah, he's he's a, he's amazing, man. And um, uh, no, I mean, I play different instruments. I pick up whatever I can. Mm-hmm. I like to learn odd instruments sometimes. You What's know? the oddest instrument? Well, one that I do that people know when they come to my show is called the Funky Monkey. That's what I call it. Mm. And it's, uh, um, I pull it out and they're looking at me like, what the hell is that? And then all of a sudden it's making moaning sounds and like, it sounds like a, uh, it sounds like a baby crying sometimes. It sounds like a monkey being funky and, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> they really love that. But it's just, you know, I like to do things like that. But the core instruments, you know, I felt like I needed to learn them. Mm-hmm. Cause um, I needed to express myself completely, and so I I learned them. And you can branch off to almost any instrument after you learn the core. Yeah, I mean you got an understanding of music. Music. They all have right. their own techniques and things you got to learn, but you have an understanding. And I was kind of it wasn't my initial thing to do that. I was kind of pushed into it because my band when I was younger, uh, when I came back with Earth Wind and Fire. I was okay. going to record something something for Maurice to hear, you know, mm-hmm. I knew about my band. And we had never recorded before. 
So I took them in there and I tried to record them, but they couldn't play on time and it was just weird and this and that. I was like, oh man. So I had to learn their parts and their instruments wow. <laughs> just to record it right. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that's where it all, it came from there actually, wow. you know. Wow. Um, top three artists of all time, dead or alive, what? any genre. What? Yes. She just don't take my segment yes. like that, man. Top three artists of all times. I sound better when no. I see it. Oh. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre. This is our top three segment. Number one. Man. <laughs> man. <laughs> That's a hard question, mm-hmm. man, because I got so many. But Man, give me them three. I mean, I'm going to go with Sly as one for okay, sure. Okay, number one, Sly. Number and one. I got to meet him. I'll tell you that story. Oh, I got to hear it. No, that's we got to hear it. Now, that's well, a that's good coming one. up next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number two. Um, Prince, of course. Mm-hmm. I thought so. I knew he was going to um, be there. Number three. Ah. Like, who made that cut? Number three. I say Al Green actually. Hey, okay, that's my boy right there, Green. man. I was playing another night. You didn't know the song. Yeah, mm-hmm. I put it on you, but you didn't know it. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, then Al Green got them secrets in there, man. I got another story about so, that too. Let's right, oh, talk about, you let's got talk, a lot let's of talk about Sly, man. I'll so, let you guys ask. So me what? What? what um, uh, let me. Let me just, just give me a little bit on Sly, man. How did you guys? How did you guys link? Man, he influenced my sound so much from an album, the Fresh album. Okay. I told you guys about the There's a Ride going on, but when I got older and I heard that fresh album, man. And Andre Simone used to play with Prince. He told me that him and Prince, when they heard that, they were like, <laughs> but anyway, um, working with RZA, we needed, we were redoing Family Affair. Okay. And he uh, got in touch with, with Sly's people. And this is when Sly was living in the mobile home, you know. And, um, he said he's coming through. Me and RZA had a, a, a studio in the back house. And um, so he came by, I had to call my old keyboard player a day, right? Cause me and him, would, we thought of Sly the same way. We were influenced by the album the same way. So I got him to come over. So I, I told him, you're gonna engineer a little bit. We gonna sit here. <laughs> Sly came up, man. And he had, first of all, he was complaining because of the stairs you got to take to get up there. It was okay. crazy. So he okay. was coming in, man, why y'all? <laughs> he had on a sugar daddy suit. Oh, really? You don't understand what I'm saying. Not like a sugar daddy, like the woman sugar daddy. I mean the candy. Oh, you Remember them candy <laughs> sugar yeah, daddy? Yeah, 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 yeah. All over his suit. He had on the pants and the, sh- the jacket with the sugar daddies all over him. Wow. And some white tennis shoes. So he comes sit down. Well, come through on him. Man, he came, sat down, and he had, we had a road. So he sat down at the roads and had the mic. I think it was this mic, actually. It's your mic. <laughs> and he just started playing and singing just off the cuff. And it was the most raw, soulful, dripping out is a person thing I've ever heard. Wow. That's how natural these guys were back in the day. I, I was taken because it was just dripping out of him. Whatever he played and sung just was beautiful. Wow. You know, and um, <laughs> and when we started recording the song, I had already played most of the parts on the song, and then he, um, he was sitting in a chair that was kind of like a stool, but instead of sitting properly on it, he's sitting and has it rocking on two legs, right? So it's rocking on two legs, he's playing the boards, and we're recording. And the chair falls. Really? And he falls. And we go over to help him get him up and we do everything we need to do and all that stuff. And he gets on there. And we like, man, you all right? You know, because I didn't want, definitely didn't want to see, you know, nothing happened to him. Make a long story short, later on when he left, we sitting there listening back to the recording. And to this day, you can listen to that recording and hear that chair fall. <laughs> Every time you hear it, you think about I that. I just shake my head every time I hear it. I'm like, man. That's crazy, man. So, but it was wonderful to meet him. Like I said, I told him how much he influenced me and just, you know, he's a really sweet, sweet guy, man. Man, it's it's something that you came up with, like to, to meet Prince and to meet all these different people. Al and Green, all Al that. Green, yeah, the Al Green story. You need to, yeah, you need to tell me how you met Al well, Green. Well, actually, no, I didn't, I did not meet So you Al didn't Green. get to meet Al Green. But you, but you said you King. had a story to tell. Well, where he recorded all of his stuff 
Royal Studio in Memphis. Um, uh, uh, it was, what? I'm trying to think, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, damn, what was his, what was the, uh, his producer? Uh, Willie Mitchell. Willie Mitchell. That, that, Willie Mitchell. I think Sir Charles was talking about him. Owned that studio. That was his spot. That's the one that Sir, that Charles, Sir Charles was talking, talking about. about. That yeah. when you walk in, you walk feel, in, you, feel you don't music. even understand. You Sir Charles Jones like came on and told me that. Same as it was. That's what he said. Really, he said if I threw a hat right there, the hat was right there. You remember he said yes. that? That's the what soundproofing is peeling off the wall. Y'all got to understand the drums, the bongo, Al Green's mic, the organ. Everything is exactly the same. Wow. Right. Boo Mitchell is a good friend of mine. That's Willie's son, and he runs everything now there. They actually did, um, what's the big uh, Bruno Mars song? Um, that, 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 I know what you're talking about. Uptown Funk. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. recorded that there and all of that. Really? That's why it sounds like it sounds. Wow. They used the horn players from Al Green's horn players and all that. <laughs> when I went in there, I got to use, we used uh, uh, his, key, his uh, piano player, his organ player, the horns. All of that came through and recorded. Wow. How did you feel? Charles is the, the organ player. He's like How a big brother. How did you feel when you were there Charles. doing that? It, I, I can't tell you because it's just, it's, it was so. Same okay, way. I got it right here. This is the one. Two, two, two things because I don't like to, I know I get to stretching things out. My wife always tells me, stop talking. <laughs> no, <laughs> but listen, man, go ahead. Two things. So you know at the beginning of love and happiness? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you hear the. Doop. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before it's that. So everybody think that might be the guitar or you step, you know, yeah, something like that. I think like it's that, a guitar, that's right? it. Right? So I'm thinking it's a guitar. I go in there with Boo and them and the people that originally was there and I'm playing it because I know how to play the song on the guitar. And he was like, no, nah, let me show you what it actually was. So he actually goes and get, you guys remember the old wooden Coca-Cola crates? Yeah. Uh-huh. The uh -huh, wooden uh -huh, ones? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He turned that upside down, said, stump your foot on that. <laughs> Wow. The original one they used, that's what it was. Wow. wow. He stumped, I stumped my foot on there. It, it sounds just deadly. like it. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Man, you can make music from anything. People think that they have to go spend all this money to, you know, do this. You can make sounds. Oh, yeah. Unique sounds that can help, you know, a song from anything. Let me. I want to ask you, like, when the music uh, also signing a deal, being independent, um, what were your challenges, you know, far as dealing with your career uh, over the time period, being that you've been in it so long? Have, I know you've had those situations or either been through them or, or turned them down. Kind of, what's your take on that? I've always been, I've accepted it now, but it's always been where I was a little ahead of my time. Okay. Timing is like, you know, one of the main things. Um, when I was doing soul music and that that deep r&b type stuff it was before neo soul came out bam yeah so people were interested they were grabbing on barry hankerson and them jomo and them from black round that had r kelly and all of them heard some of the stuff was like yo um at the time i was doing stuff with cube and them and okay. um, um and uh oh joe ruffalo that 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 uh ruffalo and fargnoli that's all over the time and prince and did Purple Rain, the movie, and all that kind of stuff, and Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay. He heard some stuff, called me in there, you know. But the thing is, is we were so ahead that they just didn't know what to do. Okay. You know, that's that was been my story pretty much mm -hmm. throughout it. They didn't know what to do with it. They didn't know what to do with it. But then a, a, a few years later, this big thing come up, and then, you know, Neo Soul is out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, Erica Badu and, and, um, and uh, D'Angelo and them are out now. Yeah. But we've been doing that stuff back here you know yeah um and then you know uh uh the couple of people that approached me for a deal stuff and all you know it's they gotta it's gotta be a situation that makes sense to you okay okay you know? um did you ever get to meet erica badu being that you've been in dallas now for oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 you guys are yeah i got introduced together? to her oh you got you got introduced to her yeah and um you know i've seen her a few times we say what's up when we see each other yeah, we yeah, know yeah. who we are you know uh, never worked with her. Okay. You okay. know, I worked with her band and the people that she worked with. Okay. As far as out here, they know who I am. We worked together on stuff, but uh, never worked with her. Um, and my in my place now, I'm more on a. You heard what I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. well, you was just in Africa for what four months, three months? Yeah. Well, About how, one month. Actually. One. How was it? Oh man, it was like it was life changing. You know, 
Uh, I've been a lot of places. I hear a lot of people say that. You know, I ain't never been. You know, it's dark at night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just being real. You know, it sound good. You know, I think about these Tarzan movies. I'm be, being from East Texas. I'm going to be real. I don't look at that's it like. That's when you watch too much TV. Well, yeah, well, that's what I got to go by. You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. what, I, that's what I'm, I'm you, you understand, right? Yeah, I uh, get yeah. you. And then I heard Jamie Foxx. <laughs> I get you. Jamie Foxx say he went over there and he was talking about it like it was no lines just as soon as you get off the airplane. So you go by what you hear. I heard there's different parts of it. There's parts that are so nice that you wouldn't believe it's Africa still. I want to hear your take. Well, it's it's a thing of <laughs> yeah you can't you can't believe me. It's, it's enough information out there right now for you to get the truth. So come on, Elvis, you can go on and dig in a little bit, do some YouTube YouTube searching. I'm gonna have to check it out, man. But now nah, I've been listening. Like people like you, I'm about to get my my front end story. See, well, I've been a lot of play. I've been over you know Europe and all Europe, those places, Asia, music. you know, and stuff. But I had never been to Africa, so that was my main thing. Even if it wasn't music that was gonna take me, I'm going to Africa. Okay, you know. Um, and Ghana opened up, you know, to, to the people over here, um, saying that, you know, they'll offer you due citizenship or whatever to come back home and all this kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> so a lot of people are going there to check it out, visit it and all of this. Mm -hmm. Um, decided to go, we went and, um, it's beautiful. Okay. Like you're saying, man, it's, 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 um. Would you move there? Actually, we're still thinking about it, you really? know. Really? Because... It's um, it feels at home. You don't have the same worries there that you have here. You're not thinking about the same things at all. You know, really? as black folks, we go out the house. We're thinking about how we gonna carry ourselves if something happened. What this is gonna do if the police pull up? You know, we think about a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not thinking about What's none the of that stuff. What's the cost of living there? It's, it's seventeen cents on the dollar, so you can have a nice spot and. You know everything taken care of, and you know it's it's um you can find your way. You know violence, I mean? militia, all of that. None of that in Ghana. I mean, there's different oh, in, things happening. Africa's in all huge, the parts, you know. Right. So you're gonna have different things happening in different places, and a lot of it's it's uh, stems off of colonialism and stuff right. that has already been there for years. Okay. So, um, but you meet the people, and they're so beautiful. You get to know who we are truly, mm -hmm. and why we've been able to maintain and hold on to our ways for so long because it's engraved in us. You know how we have the the very soulful, deep ways about ourselves that uh, uh, we're passionate people, we're loving, giving, you yeah. know, caring, you know, we hug each other, we, we hug our kids and, and really, you know, um, I mean, there's bad everywhere, but the, the majority of our culture is that. It stems from that. And, and the fact that we've been here so long and we continue to have that and have carried it with us shows who we truly are. And when you go there, you get to see why. Those people give you the shirts off their back. They're really genuine and nice and, you know, they check up on you and things that you just kind of like, hmm, you know. Um, and they don't want anything. Here is like, not, I'm not gonna say everybody, but a lot of times there's always a motive behind something. Oh yeah, yeah. So you talk by you, your atmosphere, man. So there you're saying that there's no motive. There's just being genuine. Yeah. You yeah, but there's some scammers over there too. I, I, Stone, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I said there's bad that. everywhere. <laughs> I'm just saying the majority. One of my little cousins over there right now uh, got a card and he's trying to pull a scam. I'm telling you. I'm talking about the majority <laughs> of the culture <laughs> and how people are. Uh, just, uh, I don't want to get, uh, I'll let you go before I ask you about Kenyatta again. Just positive word. Uh, he, he came on, uh, what, a few weeks, about a month ago? A month ago. And uh, he was talking about positive word and I know you guys linked together so how I mean because we didn't get to hear your side of that story but me and you talked a little bit of it and I know you love the brand just as much as he did helping him along with it um uh give us a little spiel on on, on that part of uh, you and his relationship um oh here's the shirt right here oh that's what I'm talking about baby he got the shirt on right now oh, yeah. oh I like yeah. that shirt that's nice <laughs> shout out to Kenyatta man oh yeah hey, man. He, he still take, rocking well, he still it take care of where he does yeah, he keeps he's rocking here. it when man. I go when I go in there I'm doing tours or doing anything I bring everybody by his spot and he wow. makes sure everybody take care of him man you know. over in LA where he's yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah you know and, and you know me and him became men together me him and Nolan and you know a couple other people we became men together because we were so young when we met and we we were like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we, you know, just grew through those times. You know them growing yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, know. definitely. 
So we're gonna always be brothers, you know? Yeah. And when he graduated from Morehouse in 92, he asked me because he said, man, you always had fashion. You always did your own thing. I did this thing with this this T-shirt and this and that, and I, I think we can do this line, man. It could be really cool. <laughs> so he talked me into it. I flew out to Atlanta, and that's when we got on the positive where it really, really got on it. We started yeah. making the shirts. And so we were living off of it, you know. Wow. Made the shirts, the hats, the, the sweatshirts. Then we got into jeans. We made leather jackets, you know. We did a few things. Wow. So, uh, uh, but it was always his baby. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I added to the the look. We were partners at the time. Um, I added to the look. He still uses some of the stuff that I drew up and stuff. But we're, you know, yeah. that's his thing. Like, yeah, music is mine. Yeah, you but, know. Were you with him when the, uh, I guess uh, when Tupac Nim was at, at that Andre Rising? Oh yeah, we were both there. You was there. Oh yeah, wow. man. I look at that video and I see Tupac wearing, or I see Will Smith wearing it, and now I see it in the store today here, and um, it's just something to see the history of it. No matter what, the mm -hmm. history of it is so dope. You know, to be able to look back on those things, and I know those guys know those brands because they've seen the. You know, oh yeah, man. They keep seeing it come back, man. I saw Jada. Because through the Jada thing, I was yeah, there yeah, and all that. Yeah, he talks about the you Jada thing. I, mean? and I saw Jada at um, at uh, 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 Erica Badu's birthday okay. backstage. So I went up and talked to her. She was like, what? I told her, she, I had to remind her about positive. Yeah, 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 she yeah, was, was like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't seen each other in years. In years, man. yeah, because he and told that story on I, her. I, I, like, we met her before she was known. You yeah, know? yeah. We went over to her apartment. On, um, I know on he the, told that story. Yeah, it Fairfax was dope, and yeah. Venice or whatever. She's living in a little apartment right there, and I was seeing her uh, her uh, roommate. She was a Clipper cheerleader. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you were the one who was seeing was that the roommate. One. That, he yeah, mentioned, he's that. mentioned that. Yeah, man, so, so, man, that's dope, man. We thank you, man, for coming on the show, man. Uh, how can people, you know, book you? Or, or are you doing shows uh, now with everything the way it is? Well, right now I just put out my latest song off the new album uh, just which, a week ago. Which one? Stay Away Shay. Okay, I ain't see that one. The one I it's, seen it's was- It's posted on there right now. Stay Away Shay. Stay Away Shay. Yeah, and I it's seen it. it's available on all platforms. And um, so that's being promoted right now. Then we're gonna put out a few more songs before we actually put out the album. The album. Yeah. When is the album supposed to come out? I don't know yet. Because we're still know. facing out, you know, spacing out the song. The album's been done, so it's gonna okay. come. It's just- Spacing out the song, I'm trying out some new things, marketing because I am independent. Okay. Yeah, you know, and um, so that that in itself, I try to remain that as much as I can. It's it's a thing of, you know, uh, uh, finding the right people, the right team to work with. Yeah, you know, to yeah. make things happen. But um, yeah, Stone Mecca is is on all the social media. You know, Apple, you just I put in Stone Mecca on Google and everything. Oh, you come popping up. up. And, uh, yeah, and and then you can go back and look at that. But yeah, check out that that Stairway Shay. You know, it's about, you know, you got that, that person. <laughs> it could be a person, the thing with my, in my instance, it was a person, was a person. you know, telling them to stay away because uh, they, the influence they have or whatever, you know. Right. Man. But yeah, it's uh And if there's a young artist coming up who um, would like to have you as a mentor, do you take on people like that? Man, I've always, I've always been wide open for people because I want them to know the truth about what, what I know. And you know a industry. lot. You know, and um, and I want to also inspire them to be who they are completely, not fall into the trap of um, trying to be what's out or what everybody's doing, if that's not your passion. You know what I mean? If truly you're an artist inside, mm -hmm. then express it, you know, and don't be afraid to. And the people will respond. They wow. will come. So dude, you know? Doug told me to tell you, uh, you're the dope. You're the dopest guy to come through there, man. And artistic down at artistic oh, visual studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he loved you, man. He loved, <laughs> he loved the way you, you know you play that guitar and the sounds, man. So <laughs> yeah, man, and he was just bragging about it. We talked a little bit earlier today. I was just like, hey, "Have you been down?" He was like, "Yeah." He come through, man, and rocked out with me. Yeah, so I'm supposed to be going to see him. I don't know if I'm gonna go tonight, but yeah, that's my guy right there. No, nah, yeah, no, nah, he's a good guy. He yeah. made that if experience was money thing. I told yeah, you about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Came out like wow. We were supposed to just use that for booking. <laughs> But, but he did a good job. Just, let's put it out. Let people see it. Mm -hmm. Wow! I'm going out and get something from him and yours so I can promote this uh, interview. <laughs> 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 he got some stuff down there, man. Yeah, yeah. Say, man, thank you so much, man. We love you, brother. Love you Stone too. Stone Mecca has you, been man. on Boss Talk 101, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.